So we're here with a new deck as it is a new week and uh, yeah this is my artifacts deck because I mean I, I explained it in an earlier video but I'll go through it again. I just feel like they tried, they tried to pressure us into building an artifact deck but now that like the metagame is settled it's still nowhere near the strongest uh, deck in the entire form. Like it's not gonna it's not gonna hold a candle to like goblins or like Boris tokens or something like that. So yeah, I decide, but it is still a really fun deck, and if it, if it does go off, it goes absolutely crazy, which is what I love about it. And uh, it's got a couple of my personal twists, and uh, there's some cards which I've put in which uh, I don't see in other artifacts decks, and I'll explain why they're there. And uh, without further ado, let's go into the deck, and uh, I'm trying to think what the first card will be. It's mostly blue, but it's, it's splashed, then blue, white, and then uh, black, is a t t it's just a splash of black. But yeah, we'll go through the first card, which is Mersmith. Mersmith is a fantastic card this guy generates you tokens for every artifact spell you cast if as long as you've got a spare mana and uh that's obviously ridiculous because uh a lot of your cards benefit by like artifacts in the field or the more artifacts on the field and stuff like that so it's, i mean this guy is uh he's as close as we're gonna get to an artifact factory at for such a cheap cost is what i mean and uh yeah definitely gonna run all three of them no regrets about that the thing that makes the sad is that she is not an off act herself, but you know you can't you can't have everything. I mean she'd probably be cost more or she'd be a like rare if she was not off act herself. But uh, yeah, I I don't have any regrets about having her in the deck. This deck is my deck personally has quite a bit of removal in just because I uh, I just feel like this deck it's fast but it do, sometimes does. It's not fast enough to get them, let, allow them to get a couple of late game threats out. So it's good to have a bit of removal to just uh, help you secure your victory. So I run all three reprisals. Reprisal, instant speed, instantly kills anything with four power above. And I think, regarding, apart from one creature, all your off acts will, ge will generally have less than four power. So this thing kills a big threat in your way. So <laughs> it's always good. Removal It's fantastic in this game. It's one, it's one of the best removal spells in this game. It's it's not even personally that strong, but it is it's really good removal as as far as what we're given. All four Sanctum Gargoyles, I absolutely love this guy. He is a two three flying artifact, but he brings back an artifact from your graveyard, so he's really versatile. I mean, if if your opponent's playing like a blue um a white color, I mean, and you see they've got they're clearly building up for the planar cleansing, you can still play it out and just hit the guy for a lot. They board wipe, you bring this guy back, and suddenly you've got two really powerful creatures on the field anyway. And they've used a board wipe for nothing, so yeah. You've got to play with this guy carefully, but um, I'd, I'm always happy to see him in my hand. He's, he's basically the artifacts equivalent of Grave Digger, <laughs> which is always a good thing. And then uh, here we go, we have Angelic Edict, which is my last bit of removal. And it is a. I've got two because sometimes you want to exile stuff, and sometimes there might be something with less than four power which you need to get rid of, such as, uh, I don't know, like a Viscopa Guild Mage or. Uh, I can't think, like, I don't know, like, uh, Ogre Battle Driver or something you might want to get rid of. So, th there are two cards I th can think of off the top of my head, and this is this is just mixed. So, I've got five white removal spells in the entire deck. And, uh, yeah, it's always nice to see having at least one, and uh, having five removal spells in your deck will give you, generally, you generally will see at least one removal spell a game, which is, which is what I was aiming for. And that's all the white we've got, so let's move on to the blue, where we run four of the Ethereum Sculptors. This guy is pretty much the gel of the deck. You always want to see one of these guys near your start in hand. He makes artifacts one less to cast, which just gets me. Basically, for a lot of my spells in this deck, this guy is ridiculous because they only cost like two or three mana. So, like originally, so now, now you're playing like three creatures a turn, which obviously gets ridiculous with uh, certain cards up ahead. And uh, even now, this helps you get your bombs out early and stuff. I mean, even still, he's a one two body, which means you can block tokens all day. And uh, yeah, people really like to remove this guy, which means you've got a. Uh, Removal means you've got more creatures for more way more threatening creatures later on because they've blown all their like I've seen people use like flesh dusts and stuff on this guy which really isn't worth it. He is only a one two for two. Next we move on to some card draw which we have which is the Courier's Capsule. This this is an artifact as well, obviously in an artifact deck, which is why I'm using it instead of Think Twice. But I do like this guy because uh, you can cast it a theme school to turn two and then uh, turn three you can cast this guy and then. Uh, break them on the same turn because of the reduced cost and uh, yeah it's, it's basically a cheaper inspiration in this deck and it's an artifact as well so it's 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 half of my uh, card draw I needed some card draw and I 
this guy fits the bill because he fits the theme and he is also really good even though it's not a he it is an artifact <laughs> and this this is the the hat one of the hammers in the deck we have master of ethereum number of equal to number of artifacts you control and artifacts get plus one plus one it's one of the new cards they give us and this guy is just nuts he just you can turn your board into being kind of threatening to just game ending really fast i think i've had him as a 13 13 before which uh and they had a coast leck on the field just chucked out a couple of lands and then uh, beat the coast leck because he thought i'd sacrifice some artifacts out and then i won the game like that well play testing and that was pretty satisfying to beat a coast leck with an artifact and yeah it's just Yo, he's a really good card. Wish he, if you could run four, you'd run four. Unfortunately, they only give us two, so we run two. This is a card I'm not sure about. It is Esperzoa. I like this guy a lot because, yeah, again with that uh, Ethereum sculptor, he is a two cost four three, which is pretty crazy. But you do have to bounce stuff, and uh, that can lead to issues later on. But most of the time, I just, I've got you do have bounce fodder in this deck, such as uh because I mean, if you if you if you've got quite a lot of land, you just bounce a sculptor or a mer smith and then just replay them, and that's that's normally solves the problem. Worst coming to say, worst coming to worst, you can just like bounce a token or a cheap creature or something, and yeah, he, while he while he is a four four three in the air, and uh, if they do have like a bane there or something, now you just bounce him and then uh, bring him back later when the bane there has been dealt with. This is the other half of the card draw, which is Biden. This thing is absolutely crazy in this deck. It's an artifact as well, which is uh, always nice. You never want to see two, but you have to run two, so you've got a better chance of seeing one. But combat damage is really easy in this deck because you have a bunch of flying creatures in there. Generally, you can go wide and draw a bunch of cards in there. The creatures your opponent have to attack is actually quite relevant. If you've got like an Esper Zoe out and they've got like the scope of Guildmage, you can just uh, bait them in. They have to attack and then they... You just beat their creatures and block favorably. So yeah, it's a really good card in this deck. And uh, I mean, I think I played one game. I, I always, I always like to do little anecdotes of where the cards went nuts for me. And I think I've had one game where, with this deck, where I drew well over ten cards. He, he angelic, uh, what did he, do? he angelic edict did uh, a sculpt. One of the sculptors was the same game instead of this guy. And it's just like the biggest mistake he could have made because I was just, I was really short on land, but I was. Drawing like four cards a turn, and it just it really helped me get past that mana screw, and I did win that game eventually. The double blue is a problem, but uh, well, it's not a problem. We generally can get there. This deck is favor favorable to blue, but it it'd be nice if it was single blue. But it is legendary four cost mana, and it is ridiculous. So I mean, it's it's worth the trade off. Then we have our blue bomb, which is Shardling Sphinx. I'm very surprised if people didn't see this guy coming. Basically, he's flying four four body, which is pretty good, but. He also, every time you deal combat damage, you get a free artifact which hits a field, makes other creatures bigger. It's just, it can get out of hand really fast. Because them artifact creatures can then attack in the next turn if they don't have any flying. Yeah, so it's basically like a exponential effect and it just get, can get really out of hand. But opponent cannot allow this guy to stay on the field. They need to remove it. And there's always the advantage that you can play it for a lot cheaper as well with the sculptors. And finally we move on to black, which really isn't too much black. We have the Glaze Fiends. This is my new favorite card. I absolutely adore this guy. He is ridiculous. You, if you're with a sculptor out, you play this guy turn two, play a sculptor, and then another like I don't know. Just say you've got two sculptors in hand. And you've been really lucky. You play this guy turn two. You play a sculptor, two sculptors turn three, and hit him for four. And then just you just keep chaining artifacts like with Mersmith. You play an artifact. This this is my new favorite combination. You've got Mersmith and this guy in the field. You play an artifact, you, you draw air, uh, you make a token with Mercy. This guy gets plus four, plus four, just just for that. If you've got nothing else in your hand, it's just he's absolutely he's, he is. You need to remove this guy. <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure if people haven't realized yet, but this guy need, he's, he is literally the hammer of the deck, and he win. He just, he's won more games than any other card in this deck. And you've seen some of the bombs so far, and yeah, I'm, that's not an understatement. I hopefully I'll get to show that this week. This is a card which you don't see too many people running, which is a Savage Slasher, and he gets plus one plus all for each artifact creature in the graveyard, which obviously doesn't gel too well with a Sanctum Gargoyle, but apart from that, I, I really like this guy, and I don't think many people do, because uh, late game, if they've board wiped, this kind of can be like a 8-1 or something ridiculous, if you've been really lucky, which obviously means that they need first strike or a shock or something, which is it's really good for two mana, so he, 
he's good late game and early game he's only he's a two cost artifact which obviously when you've got creatures hit, hitting the battlefield which are artifacts that benefits and this guy he, he's also involved with the like the glaze fiend he's, he's mostly here because he's really good with glaze fiend because uh he's only he's only one cost with the sculpture on glaze fiend so you can just start spamming loads of artifacts out he's also a guy if he's not useful yeah you just keep bouncing him with espanola or the jellyfish i'm not even going to try and pronounce that thing that's going to be my bane this week but yeah you just keep bouncing him and uh your jellyfish gets through so yeah i really like this guy i mean you only run two of them but because i mean you don't want to see him like every game because you don't want to see him in your starting hand most of the time because uh, he will only be a 1-1 one, one for 2, which isn't fantastic. But I, I do like seeing this guy. He's, he's fairly versatile, which is why he's in the deck. Now we move on to the colourless part of the deck, where we run... Oh god, I just... Two Dark Seal Ingot. This is good mana fixing. It adds up to our mana nicely, so it helps us get to our like really late game bombs as well. Obviously, it's got the ridiculous thing, so you've got a Sculptor out. This guy only costs one mana, basically, cast. Because the sculptor makes them two, and then you play, and then you've got one free mana to use whenever you want. So this is a, it basically says you can play one mana for any mana source, indestructible. So it's, it's pretty ridiculous. And uh, yeah, like to run two, because I mean, we do have some fairly heavy stuff in this deck, as you'll see. We might as well go on to him now and skip the next card. Dark Seal Colossus. To be honest, and to be like absolutely brutal... If I had to cut this deck down to 60, even I do like to run 61... <laughs> For reasons I explained it like some long time ago, but yeah, if I did have to cut down to 60, this would be the guy to go. But I just feel, as they're giving us an artifact which fits the theme, it's a mythic that added it specifically to make artifacts better. I think it'd be rude not to play this guy. I haven't actually cast him yet. I've not seen him. I don't think, apart from when like a molder football, uh, molder football. No, when I mold a couple of hands down. But I, I like the idea of him in this deck. I think he's pretty funny. 11. 11 cost you pro most likely by the time this guy's on the field he'll be cheaper than that and yeah he's basically ex he needs exiled otherwise he can't die because <laughs> they're not going to minus counter him and uh, even if they do we just get shuffled back in the uh, library but I mean I haven't seen him hopefully we can see him do some work uh, he's got trample which is something Kozilek lacks but and indestructible I'd still take Kozilek's abilities over him but he's an artifact I feel it'd be rude not to play him so he is in the deck and uh yeah, not much else to say. Hopefully we can see him do some work. He's pretty cool as well. He looks scary. And with that uh, expert analysis... Ooh, let's just chuck one out. Uh, so I apparently only run two of these guys, unless I've just messed up. Yeah, I also only run two. I don't like to see all three. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> just trying to remember my cards there. I only chucked one out. But yeah, Galvanic Juggernaut. I, secret I love this card. I mean, I really do, because... It's basically got vigilance if you go on for alpha strikes every turn, because they'll just keep like they'll like try and favorably block like a token or something, and they'll just keep ignoring this guy and he's easy for five five, for four with vigilance. I mean, that doesn't untap stuff. Cancel gives you only creature out, but if if you're if you've got them in a situation where they have to block every turn, you're golden because this guy just keeps hammering them. Plus there's there is a ridiculous chance that you can get him out turn three, which means he will be the biggest boy in the park and he will smash them in the face and i do like to smash people in the face and this is what this deck does and he's a juggernaut which is always a cool cool word <laughs> finally we move on to the last card well no juggernaut decided he wanted to show up again but we'll move on to the last card which it, if it lets me apparently my mouse is broken there we go which is <laughs> tide hollow strix only want two of them because it's kind of demanding on the mana to have a blue and a black on turn but this is like my last it's a this guy is kind of the bridge between my removal and more creatures. It's, it's like pseudo removal, pseudo creature. I mean, if you've got Master out, this is a 3 2 fly, a Death Touch in the air, which is really nice. But even if you don't, he's a 2 1 Death Touch. So if they've got like a Pelic Worm, you can just trade, even though you would take a lot of damage, but you would just trade. They'd probably be scared to attack in and there. Uh, that's always a fun thing. So yeah, I do like this guy. Don't want to see him in your starting hand because this, this Dex mana, I mean, it's good, but it's, it's, it's asking a lot to have untapped blue and untapped black in your hand to cast this guy or like something of the sorts he is in the deck though because death touch is amazing <laughs> even though they haven't really given us too much reviews and then uh, let's move on to the lands which actually I'm, I'm not being complaining i mean the, the biggest struggle i've had in this deck is getting the double blue out but uh i am heavily favoring blue i mean i'll count up my sources i've got three arcane Sanctums, three azorius gilgates 
three Demir Gil Gits, which is 12 sources right there. And then 17 blue I've got. And I've got uh, how much white I've got? 7, 10, 17, 12 white, and then 3, 6, 9, 11 black. So yeah, 17, 12, 11. So it's heavily favouring blue, and then white and black are kind of in the back. I mean, I'd run less black, but you do want to see this guy on turn 2, so that's kind of why he's favoured. Plus, you've got, you've got to remember, I've got Dark Seal Ingot, so that's basically free mana for each of them colours as well. And I've got all this card draw as well, so I mean, mana hasn't been an issue so far, and hopefully it stays that way. And uh, yeah, that's really all I've got to say, so uh, look forward to this deck tomorrow. <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun with it. Hopefully we can, hopefully I can, sh hopefully I can get Dark Seal Colossus out. I mean, I really want to play this guy. I just, I feel he'd do better in like a green deck with Colvitz and stuff. But he is an artifact. He fits the theme. He's like Sovereign in uh, the app, my Absan deck. He, he, he fits the theme. He's in the deck, but he doesn't look like he'd be the strongest in it. But hopefully he proves me wrong. And uh, yeah, on that bombshell, I will see you guys tomorrow, where we will test this theory and uh, hopefully start things off in a winning way. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you then.